What's the word, y'all? It feels good to say those words. Sometimes I take a mental reset and a mental break from recording videos, editing videos, and I am back to talk about Summer League. As you can see, we're no longer called Game. We're back to Kenny for real. I'm super excited about that. We can talk about that a little bit later. I want to talk about Summer League. I hate to break your hearts. I know a lot of y'all see me as Kenny Beecham basketball guy if there's basketball alone Kenny Beecham is going to be watching when it comes to summer league not necessarily I try to watch some of it or get a glimpses of it but I can't tell you and lie to you and tell you that I'd be glued to my tv the last couple days I haven't when it came to Utah or the Sacramento summer league keeping it a buck I didn't watch a second of those <laughs> it's either Vegas or nothing or, or sometimes Orlando Orlando summer league used to be pretty fun but that was it so the last couple days, I've watched an okay amount of Summer League games, but I wouldn't lie to you and tell you I've seen all of your favorite teams play. I may be keeping up with a little stat lines, things like that. But anyway, anyway, none of that is really relevant. The reason I don't necessarily love Summer League is because when you think about it, we're talking about a 15-man roster where only about three of those players have guaranteed contracts for this upcoming season, which means that we got 12 players who are trying to impress their opposing general managers or also the other 29 general managers around the league to get a contract, right? These same 12 players were just there, the man on their college teams or international teams, and now they got to share the ball. These same 12 players have practiced together for three days. Basically, what I'm saying is the product is not necessarily great. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we have it first halves in 32 to 34. A uh, first half getting 12 turnovers to 14 turnovers. It can be dirty and bad. But it can also be super exciting. And the reason I'm making this video today because I watched two, count them, two super exciting games. One of them was revolving around a player that, no joke, I guess two players, but one of these players, no joke, I listened to a podcast where they said the first overall pick, Cade Cunningham, was not fit to play NBA ball yet. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you digest that before we move on. They said the first overall pick, Cade Cunningham, was not fit to play NBA basketball yet based on a single summer league game. Do you know how many players struggled in summer league in general and turned out to be good NBA players? Do you know how many players have dominated summer league and struggled to get a contract? No disrespect because this guy's an absolute legend in my eyes. Josh Selby has his number retired in Vegas because when it comes to summer league, he be averaging 30. Him and Vander Blue. They struggled to get contracts. Last year, LaMelo Ball didn't even score in his first game. He won Rookie of the Year. He got his own signature shoe now. It's kind of crazy how people are willing to overreact. And I'm okay with having like crazy takes if you're having fun. But the people that I heard say this, and I, I'm just going to say, I listen to a lot of basketball podcasts. It can be the number one sports podcast in the world. But sometimes I'll be strolling through. I got people that hit me up and say, hey, can you listen to my podcast? So I've subscribed to a ton of podcasts, right? And the, the specific one I was listening to is just two guys who just enjoy basketball. I listen to them because they're funny. Their takes are typically pretty bad. And when that one came on, I'm in my car. I went to the very next show. I don't I, I didn't even want to listen no more. I, I should unsubscribe. One summer league game where, yeah, he struggled, but he wasn't necessary. He wasn't terrible. And then today he put up 20. Um, he had the one crossover on, on the number two pick and hit a shot. He also did get a little bit clamped up and ripped up here and there. He ended with seven seven files. If, if you're looking at Summer League as a way to figure out who the next big thing is, you're doing it wrong. What I look at is, is not necessarily who's performing well or who's not performing well. It's how they're doing the things that they do. And what I see, even with Kay Cunningham struggling these first two games, is that he's playing with good pace still. He's got good vision. He's still got the, the leadership thing. For him to be the number one pick, you can really tell on the court because he's talking to his guys, telling them where to be. Those are the things I look for, right? But like Patrick Williams had 30 today, which is exciting. They had a big time comeback. But I'm not looking at Patrick Williams having 30 points and be like, oh, this is the year he go average 20. That's not how you do things when it comes to summer league. I think we need to really, really just sit down and try to gauge these type of performances, right? Like first time I watched Jalen Graham, because I am not a college guy and I definitely didn't watch the G League Ignite. I, I did not a single minute of like actual gameplay. Watch some highlights. You know, I, I did a little scouting report once we got closer and closer to the draft, but I would be lying to you if I said I watched a full game of Scotty Barnes before his first summer league game. 
You know what I'm saying? And these were the first time I got an impression of these dudes. So the first time I watched Jalen Green, I was absolutely impressed. There's a tweet out there of draft night um, where I was like, the Houston Rockets won the draft. Of course, I, I saw that Jalen Green could get buckets. One of my, two of my favorite prospects in this year's draft got drafted to, to Houston. And that was uh, Al P. Sengun or Sengun. I still don't know how to pronounce it. I, I, I will learn it eventually. Um, and, and Usman, who played for Spain. Those are two of my favorite prospects. And I am an absolute terrible person with trying to gauge who's the next big thing. I'm always trying to swing for the fence, and that's why I always pick the the lesser known international player. I I saw Giannis be good one time, and I immediately thought, okay, that guy can. It's not gonna work like that. But Sengun, Sengun, through the first two games, I would say, has been the most impressive player in the entire thing. Again, I'm not watching every single game, so don't come at me and say, Chris Diorte. I know he's hooping. I understand that. But, like, from the games I have watched and the things I've watched, Sengun has been the most impressive. And this is coming from a guy that already loves Sengun coming into this draft. One of the things I really, really questioned was his ability to defend. And I know we're, in the, we're talking about um, Summer League and 90% of these players will end up in the G League or overseas. I am impressed with the way he has been able to defend. And we, I knew he had the offensive game. I knew he had the ability to hit the three. I knew he talked to the basketball, and every time he does it, they talk about it oh my god i didn't know that he didn't know a single lick of english <laughs> until today um so that was very interesting overall this houston rockets versus detroit piston game for the first half felt like a real life game it didn't feel like a suddenly game and then i realized the reason it felt like a real life game is because this is 80 percent of the pistons roster for next season this is 80 percent of the the rockets roster for next season these are like they're playing regular season games. Josh Christopher, Kenyon Martin Jr., Sin Goon, Jalen Green. I don't think um, um, Kyrie Thomas is going to be a big part of their 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 future going on. Um, uh, th th those are four players that will be on like the actual roster next season. Get a minute. Then you got to the Pistons, Sadiq Bay. Oh, we're going to talk about sophomore year players because why are we having these players in here? Because they're just dominating. Sadiq Bay, Seku, uh, Kay Cunningham, Killian Hayes, Saban Lee. Shoot, Luka Garza might even get some run next season. That's six players out of their potential 13 to 15 that'll really be on their roster. So that's why this game felt so intense because. This is like their actual roster. Also, it's a little one versus two blood. I saw some Pistons fans going at some Rockets fans, and I'm completely okay. We're getting some in, inside like um, rivalries going on. Cade respects Jalen. Jalen respects Cade, but sometimes the fans can really ramp it up. Like Trey Young versus Luka. Those dudes love each other. You remember when Luka hit the half-court shot at the Rising Stars game? They hugged. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're friends. But it's the fandom that gets the rivalry going. And I am okay with that if it's the number one versus number two. Sophomore year players. First of all, that whole class, the the LaMelo class, or whatever you want to call it, um, did not get a summer league at all last season. So a lot of them are coming to this year's summer league and are like, yeah, I'm going to dominate. And I like to see sophomore year players realize that this is, this is me, you know? The guy that's guarding me is not going to make an NBA roster. So let me take advantage of it. The guy that's guarding me has not guarded Kevin Durant like I have. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what Patrick Williams is saying. I guarded Giannis, LeBron, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, all of those players. You're trying to tell me this little dude on the Spurs going to guard me? Nah, I got this. So, like, a lot of the sophomore year players are taking a ton of shots. Obi Toppin, uh, Maxi Kleeb, I mean, not Maxi Kleeb, but Tyrese Maxi, um, um, uh, Manuel Quickly, Bo Bo. These players are just going out, and it's important because... They have a little bit more expectations going into year number two, opposed to some of the younger guys that have expectations for going into year number uh, year number one, especially with like Sadiq Bey and them. They're expect to make a jump. Patrick Williams is expected to make a jump because of the moves that the Bulls did is really reliant. Our ceiling revolves around Patrick Williams. Believe it or not, he might be our fourth option or sometimes our fifth option, but our ceiling as a team is a lot to do with Patrick Williams. So to see him come in and, and play the way he has played has been pretty, pretty Solid. Let me let me go through these again. Who are some other players that were really exciting to me? Uh, Trey Murphy. I, obviously, I watched him because they beat up on my Bulls in that first game. I knew a little bit about Trey Murphy going into it. I really relied on my guy, Pierre, who's like the draft expert of our, our friend group. And he was in love with Trey Murphy. He actually wanted his Knicks to get him. Um, and I could see why. He was super, super impressive to me. Um, who else? Who else did I watch? Oh, let's talk about Scotty Barnes briefly. Um, again, I didn't watch a single game of Scotty Barnes until this first summer league game. And if you remember, if you were there doing my draft stream, if you weren't there, I'm disappointed in you. Um, I asked my chat, like, is this a W or L for the Raptors? The fact that they selected him number four instead of, um, 
instead of instead of my guy Jalen Suggs. And a lot of people were like L. And I was legitimately asking questions because I didn't know much about Scotty Barnes. And again, I'm not overreacting to a single summer league game, but I see the mode of him being a, a very good NBA player. Jalen Suggs, who was number five, had a very good game going into overtime and looked like a leader on the court. I think that this draft class, I know people had already said this is one of the best draft classes in recent history. I understand it now. A lot of these players look super, super good. A lot of these players look super, super good. Um... Antonio Blakeney retired his number in the summer league too because he is uh he's always gonna come in and hoop. I hope they give him a contract because if there's one thing that he can do, that is get buckets. Um, I watched the 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 Bucks play and Jordan Nawara. I can't I still don't know how to pronounce his name. Had a very good game, but I didn't watch it for him. I watched it for my guy Mike Smith. My boys on the summer league roster. He did not score in his first game, but hey, they play tomorrow at two o'clock or three o'clock. He got it. He'll get on that board. You know what I'm saying? There's still games going on right now. Um, Davion Mitchell, let me, can I please address this? And I, I want, anytime y'all see somebody in my comment section talking about Davion Mitchell under my mentions, I just want you to clip this and send this to them because I have been misinterpreted, misconstrued a lot about Davion Mitchell. First of all, me and Davion are friends, believe it or not. You know what I'm saying? So for reference, when Davion Mitchell, before Davion Mitchell was drafted, I was saying that I expected him to jump or drop in the draft because a lot of the teams that were drafting in the top of the lottery already had point guards. So when he was drafted to the Sacramento Kings that already have De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese um, Halliburton, I was like, that's a very peculiar pick that I don't really love. Because if anything, he's still coming off the bench and he, like, where's the room for him? Reese is a thin frame shooting guard. I don't expect him to, they could, they could definitely run a three guard lineup. I'm not saying that they can't, but like for long-term success, I don't know if Davion Mitchell was the pick, especially with him being an older point guard and, and a bit smaller as far as his height. Obviously he's bulky and he, he's great like that. And I was just trying to be relatively realistic about things. I didn't say anything about his individual game, the saying that he can't hoop or things like that, but people hear criticism about whether it be their favorite prospect, their favorite player, and try to use that. Like, I have... Criticism is very just like a normal part of sports in general. There's no such thing as a perfect player. Um, and Davion's been playing very good. And I'm, I'm hoping that he is the right pick for Sacramento. But through the first draft, or through the draft, and through these first couple weeks, I, my opinion has not changed about him being the wrong pick just because of the fit aspect. Not that he can't hoop. <sighs> Let's talk about called game. Um, called game is done. I mentioned this on Twitter, um, but I know everybody that's watched this video don't follow me on Twitter, so I'm completely okay with that. Um, what it really boiled down to when I switched it up or decided to switch it up um, was a few things. It was mentally taxing, uh, physically taxing to do the show, mostly because it was either over Zoom and it didn't, f it didn't feel organic, it didn't feel authentic, or when it was in person, I had to fly all the way to California. I was flying to California every single month, and again, that's very taxing, especially during these times and yada yada. I, I, don't, I hate flying, first of all. It's a weird job for me to be in where I'm traveling to interview people. I hate flying. Absolutely hate it. If I, if I can go the rest of my life without flying again, I would agree to do that thing. But I can't because of my job, right? Um, and then also, it was too many cooks in, 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 the, in the kitchen. I am a very hard person to work with. I know that's hard to believe because on these videos, I'm super excited and I'm just happy to talk and do things. I am a hard person to work with because when I have a vision about something, I want it to be done exactly like that. And, and when we were doing Code Game, we had a production team and producers that had a say, and I didn't like that. Um, I also had some people in the whole thing try to, I won't use the word take advantage of, but try, they, they insulted my intelligence in this whole project. So as for me, it was like, if I'm going to do anything, it's solely going to be Kenny for real and mean like just me, or I'm going to individually hire, interview and hire people that I think share the same vision as me. So as of right now, Kenny for real is this. But it does have the opportunity to grow to more than just this. All right? Hopefully that clears things up. Um, hopefully that clears clear things up. I'm excited about Summer League, though. How much more would I be watching? Probably not a lot. But it's been fun.